Fed rates interest rates to 22-year high leaves door open for more. Uh, this is a Bloomberg story. Um, so here we go. Uh, Federal Reserve interest rates its interest rates from five and a quarter to five and a half, highest in 22 years. Looking ahead, we will continue to take a data-dependent approach in determining the extent of additional policy firming that may be appropriate, says uh, Jerome Powell. Powell highlights encouraging signs of inflation curbing, but warns that policy has not been restrictive enough for long enough to have its full desired effect, indicating a possibility of further tightening. The FOMC upgrades economic growth to moderate from modest while expressing concern over elevated inflation in service sector categories due to tight labor markets and expects credit tightening to impact the economy following bank failures. Tom. Wow. So we kind of saw it coming. Got another quarter point. The Fed rate now five and a half. You know, it sits there five and a quarter, five and a half. There's always a little tiny spread, which means it's just putting more pressure on everything. But what he said was very interesting. He said, remember, we've been waiting for the Fed to interpret figures. Well, you know, we and, and listen to what does the Fed say that he thinks it's a moderate problem or a modest problem. And we, we, we hang on the words of the Fed. But now he's saying it's going to be data dependent. And number one, he said, you know, inflation rose by 3%. Uh, through June, but that was only one month and it was really like closer to four and a half and getting down to 2% is a long way to go. And then he said, when we get together on September 19th and 20th, remember, this is a longer, this is the longer summer break for the Fed. We're going to be all the way September 19th and 20th before they get together again. And we're just sitting here 20th of uh, uh, July was just a week ago. So that's effectively two, almost two months. And what he said was, I will have two more job reports and two more consumer price reports in hand by that gathering. So what he's saying now, basically, is the stock market is going to be able to predict and manage what the Fed says in September, because it's going to be a data-driven approach. So we don't have to wait for Jerome Powell to say, I feel this, or you know how we hang mm -hmm. on his words, modest, moderate, major, what word did he use? Now he's saying it's going to be data. So we're going to look at those job reports and the consumer price reports. If the job report is too hot, if the uh, consumer price index is too high, then he's probably coming with a quarter point on September. But the market, you're going to see the market react as soon as the reports come out because it's going to tell the market what he's going to do because he says we're going to data driven. And I think but that I think is a sign that things are getting better in the stability of the economy. He also said... I don't really see a recession this year. Mm -hmm. I think we've been able to surf this thing out a little bit, which means maybe everything the Fed did here, even though we had a lot of layoffs, people were looking for work, um, maybe we've gotten through this thing. And so I think... Uh, What's a 30-year fix right now? 30-year fix right now. So let's go to mortgages. I say it's like 6.8%. Rob, you have that? I sent you the link. 68 well, That's watch what this. Well, what would you expect would happen overnight with the rate goes up a quarter point? You expect to be up a little bit. Uh, it was a link I sent you from Google on the in your email. Anyway, so I just pulled Florida. Half a million, 20% down, state of Florida mortgage, credit score 680, 699. That is where the majority of America is, or just under. 30-year fix, 7 Point nine five. What? Um, Seven point nine five. Five hundred thousand dollar mortgage. What? Uh, Twenty percent down. Correct. Six eighty to six ninety nine. Seven point nine five. Correct. As of this morning, and you can see the little spike up right there that happened sure. overnight. So we're still going to see. We're still going to see those rates. You know, between six and three quarters and seven. And people say, well, I'm, I'm you know, people will write in the comments, oh, I, I got a six and a quarter. Yeah, what'd you pay? Two points. Oh, okay. Well, you really did pay mm -hmm. the rate, but the points just make your payment less artificially because uh, you paid the points up front. So it's that's where mm -hmm. it's going. So that's where the rates are, but it's still going to be heavy on mortgages, which means, as we've been talking about homes, the supply is still going to be getting this pressure. Well, uh, quick fact check of myself. The I said 6.8, that's actually the 15-year fixed uh the the 30 years closer to the, the number tom said in the uh the um 7.9 7 percent. 7.9 yeah range. i mean this just means sellers are still not going to well, be selling. well i'll say to this tom brought up a good point and, you know the whole conversation for the last handful of months what i've seen on the wall street journal a lot of these papers and on twitter is are we preparing for a soft landing or a hard landing in the economy so you tell me what you guys think everyone out there watching pbd podcast i would argue 
that if you look at the numbers where we were pre-COVID to where they are today, unemployment rate right around 3.5% pre-COVID, that's right where we are now. Inflation, pre-COVID, what, 1.5% to, you know, breaking news, if you didn't know, we're closer to 3% inflation. If you kind of, what do they do for the consumer price index? They basically remove certain uh, costs of food and goods and, and energy costs. So we're at 3%. We were at what? 8% a year ago. So whatever Jerome Powell's doing seems to be working. And stock market, last but not least, I think the Dow just hit 35.5. I mean, I remember in 2020 when it crashed, it came back. I did an episode on uh, Sozcast then that we hit 30, 30K. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. I remember that. So that was, that was a thanks, show. Tom. You were my one uh, uh, thumb remember. up uh, at that one point. Appreciate that. But I would argue... Tell me if I'm wrong, that we're kind of near where we were pre-COVID. I concur with everything Thank that you, you guys with said. Thank you, with your constituents. Well, um, yeah. Exactly. Actually, um, an un unemployment does, shows... Does Bidenomics get credit? I mean, uh, no, I think Powellnomics get yeah. credit. I don't honestly don't that see... That was a quick shout-out to Joe Biden. Yeah. I had to do it because... What up, I mean, Joe? What up, Sleepy? Here's what I will say. No, let's be honest. He's let's going to take credit whether sure, he deserves he it or to. not. Are you kidding me? Of he course. has to. Yes. What can the president do? The president has two things, the power of the executive order and the ability to influence the Treasury and the IRS on tax policy. Has Biden done anything on tax policy? No. No. Has he done anything with, like, executive order except for the emergency stimulus checks that went out to all of Americans on COVID? Not really. What has happened is I think the economy is a little more resilient than we all and me, mm -hmm. you know, thought. And Powell has gotten things to cool, even though it has stalled the housing mm -hmm. sector. Well, the but average any American, president's going to take credit. Of course. They have Trump, to. Trump took Anybody. credit for the lowest yeah. unemployment, for the highest stock market, as you should. The average American couldn't pick Jerome Powell out of a lineup. Fuck, the average American couldn't pick Joe Biden out of a lineup. Hell, Joe Biden couldn't pick himself out of a lineup at <laughs> well, this the, point. The but the point is this. Because she's running if, from If you're yeah. running for president. There he is again. 2024, you're Joe Biden, and the economy sustains at this rate or even improves in the next 6, 12 months, of course you're going to run on that and say, we're back to where we were pre-COVID. Elect yep. my old ass for another term, and we'll keep this party well, going. Speaking of pre-COVID, and then I'll defer back to Pat uh, to keep going through our stories here. I'm on a deep dive right now on return to work, who's who's working, who's not, and I'm going to have that on the BizDoc podcast on Monday at 11.30 a.m. But I did see this. There are more moms working now than there were pre-COVID. A percent of total moms in America. There are more minority women working now as total percent than mm -hmm. there were pre-COVID. And the survey is all saying the reason is inflation has pushed them more of those back to work. So we're talking mm -hmm. about the lower part of the middle class and core middle class. More of those people are going back to work in response to inflation right now. So so within the victory yeah, yeah. on unemployment, there's also some pinch families is, is that, that are working harder. Is that old school women working mm -hmm. or new school women who are like transitioning? Because that's technical. <laughs> you got to get that right. And the well, second thing, yeah. you know, Joe Biden's legacy is going to be the man put all the women to work. Hey, if you enjoyed this short clip, you want to watch the whole thing, click over here. But if you want to make 2023 the beginning of the greatest years of your life, I host a conference once a year. It's called the Vault Conference, where 3,000 CEOs, executive entrepreneurs from around the world come together to strategize for three and a half days. This year, it's going to be at Miami Diplomat Resort. And the speakers this year is going to be Tom Brady. He'll be there. I'll be interviewing him. Mike Tyson, Will Guidera, the guy that ran 11 Madison in New York. If you run a business, if you're a CEO, entrepreneur, and executive, this is not an event you want to miss out on. Get yourself, your spouse, your business partner, your running mates registered, and I look forward to seeing you there. Click on the link here or see the link in the description, and I hope to spend three and a half days with you in Miami in August and September. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.